All right, so we have Ida Barnett, who is a wonderful, wonderful person. I'm inspirational. I love her art, but I love her heart more than anything. I met her about six or seven years ago, and um, it was a brief encounter, but we reconnected, I think, through Instagram. There were some other areas that, that the connection was vital. And I felt like I wanted to be a part of her life, even though it may not have been time then, because I saw her as an authentic person. And so I'm introducing her now. She's a credentialed advocate. And so Ida, here it is for you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I appreciate you coming on. And um, I appreciate Kim giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Um, I was sitting here trying to think of how to start. I, I am a credentialed advocate, victim advocate. Um, my focus is on children, women, children, and families who have gone through trauma. Um, and I was thinking, you know, I wanted to introduce myself as that. However, as I'm sitting here, I think my most important job in this life has been to be a mother, a parent, um, to bring two children in this world and to teach them about the world and how to be better people and how to be strong people and how to be kind people and loving people. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm gonna try to get through this as best I can. Um, I'm a little shaky at first. Um, I wanted to share with you, so that was, that is my most greatest accomplishment as my children, being a mother. On uh, February 4th, Give me just one moment. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna do this. On February 4, 2016, my son was, uh, he's 27, he was shot and murdered on the street in Las Vegas, Nevada. You're doing great. You're doing great. And uh, we celebrate you. He was 27. Um, he was shot nine times. With that being said, um, my life was shattered. Uh, life as I knew it was shattered. Um, I had been married for 28 years, um, going on 30 years with the same man. Um, so when my son was murdered, um, it was almost as if I had had a stroke. Um, I didn't know how to do anything. I, I lost all of who I was, um, or I thought that I, I lost all of me, um, who I was at that time. Um, I was angry at God. Oh, I was pissed off. And I'm gonna tell you, I love the Lord, but I'm gonna tell you, I cussed like a sailor. So I was pissed off. Um, the scripture I would always give my son daily is Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. So you can only imagine what I felt when he was murdered, shot nine times on the streets of Las Vegas. I was angry, I was, I was pissed. Um, anyone who knew me kind of, um, they couldn't deal with me because of the pain that I was going through. I didn't think I was gonna make it. I, I did not think I was going to make it. Um, every day, I was always the type of person before this happened, I was always the type of person who had everything planned out. I'm an artist, I'm a creator, I'm a writer. My first book was publishing, it was in the print as my son got murdered, so he never got a chance to read it. I sent my book with him in his casket. Um, so I was the type of person who had everything planned out. February 4th, 2016, all the rose colored glasses came off of my eyes that day, that very second, um, my whole life changed. Um, 
I didn't think I would be sitting here today, but I am. And I can tell you for sure, I know only by God's grace. And I'm so thankful because I had to learn how to live all over again. Um, when it happened, um, I, I, I couldn't think past each day. I couldn't see myself in the next morning. All I could say is, God, please let me get to 12 o'clock midnight. So I couldn't think past the next day. And this is for a person who has gone from point A in her life to point C to D to E to F because I've had everything planned out to make a better life for me and my children. So at that point, it all stopped. It took me about, I'm thankful for my daughter, her husband, my grandchildren. It took me until June of 2018 to walk away from the trial, the so-called trial. I will never have closure here on this earth. And I had to come to terms with that because the system is not set up for us everyday people. I'm not gonna bash it. I'm not gonna say because my focus is on advocating for people who need me most now because they are in such dire need of us. If you have gone through a trauma, trauma is trauma, but the loss of a child to me it almost took me under. I've been, I've been through a lot of things in my life, but the loss of my son, I didn't think I was gonna make it. I'm thankful that I had my daughter and her husband, uh, my family, um, but it took every day for me to get up and say, Ida, what is your purpose for today? If I didn't ask myself daily, what was my purpose? I wasn't gonna make it. It wasn't gonna happen. It, I have known people who have actually died from broken hearts. This is, this is something that you can actually die from a broken heart. Um, it's something I never thought I would have to deal with. I walked away from my marriage of 28 years, not, and I'm not gonna bash him, it is what it is. You know, it was, it was bad for me, it was bad for my children. Um, I had to walk away from that marriage to get my daughter and I somewhere where we could heal, where we could grieve. I had to get us to a safe place where we could breathe. Um, recently, this past year, I've continued to learn everything that I can. I've learned about trauma. I've learned about the effects of trauma, how you can't run away from PTSD. You actually have to face these things because it's worse if you try to maneuver around those feelings or those things that are attacking you, it's gonna be worse. You have to face them. Um, this year, I started a nonprofit called IEB ICU Stephen Art Foundation. And that means in everything beautiful, I see you because that's how I live my life now, seeing my son. In everything beautiful, I see him. My daughter is the same way. She supports everything that I do. She, um, she focuses on the good. That's why we don't spend, I always say the devil is in the detail. So I try to get away from, sometimes we have to focus on the detail, but when it comes to trials and what the police aren't gonna do, and my son laying on the, on the pavement with nine holes in him, I had to get away from those details so I could breathe again. I had to learn how to live, how to walk, how to speak, how to breathe again. And the only way I did that was by God's grace. And the fact that I I'm stay focused on helping other people during the time that during the time right after he was killed, he was murdered. Um, I couldn't find any help in Las Vegas there was not a support group that supports parents or families who have had murdered children. Um, a lot of times people did not want to be close to me because of the pain. Of course, I'm, I'm very outspoken, you know, with things I go through because I want to be transparent. Um, so a lot of people could not even deal with me because of the pain that they knew that I was going through. 
Um, there was a um, organization out of Baltimore that, con that I contacted and it's called Family Survivor Network. Without Family Survivor Network, I don't think I would have made it. Um, they hooked me up with a counselor out of Baltimore, a lawyer out of Baltimore, a support group out of Baltimore. I'm 3000 miles away and I got all of this, you know, from, from the East Coast. Um, without them, I don't think I would have made it. I, I met a few other people who, um, who had lost children. One, uh, one lady, her name is Dorothy Holloway. And she, her son was murdered and she has actually forgiven the murder and trying to get him out of jail. You know, so she taught me that at some point I have to find, forget, I have to forgive this young man. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, but I know I have to get there. You know, I just try to stay focused on being an advocate for children. Um, right now I am a care coordinator for a um, um, mental health office here in, in Delaware. And I also am a youth advocate for a residential treatment center for the youth here in Delaware. Um, so I try to stay busy. I try to continue to learn about trauma and the effects. Um, I also facilitate art programs for children, women and families who have suffered through trauma. Um, through the breathing techniques, I think art really, my creating kept me alive for the three years that I couldn't, I couldn't hold on. I could not hold on to anything. I didn't think I was going to make it. I would be up in the middle of the night. I think I did a 14 by 14 foot mural on my apartment wall because I couldn't sleep at night. So that art kept me alive. And it, it, I think to get through trauma, we have to bring it out of our bodies. We have to move it out. We have to breathe it out. We have to work it out. Um, whether that be through painting or baking or singing or dancing, whatever we need to do to get it out of our bodies, we, that's the goal. And that is some of the things that I teach and I try to I really love children. I love youth. Um, I think that they need so many tools to make it in this world today. And that is my focus to give them as many tools as they need to, uh, to get to where they need to go. Um, it's 10 times harder when they've gone through so much trauma in their lives. Um, if I can give them two hours a week of creating and, and arting and moving and breathing, that's two hours they don't have to be in the bull crap. You know what I'm saying? In their mind. So um that's where I'm at I know it's a lot <laughs> I'm sorry but I did <laughs> um I think you did very well and I think that you are definitely an example of heroism or shiroism um I don't know anyone that has went through it the way that you have I've been in the background you know watching you and um mm -hmm. Uh, when I yeah. saw you had started the foundation, um, I began to support you. I think it's so um, vital to um, see our brothers and sisters and support them through these situations. Yeah. I also saw how um, expansive your art gift was birthed through this pain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's often something that you know I tell myself and others uh, that no pain, no gain. And unfortunately, at this here cost, it's very hard. But God had shown you that you had something more to give the world. And that was beautiful. Um, I want to add one more thing. It's such a timely initiative connected to killing and murders. Timely initiative that you've taken. Whether we know who it was that did the uh, deed or not because of the issues, even with our political leaders or um, authorities that are just killing the children. So I think that this information and even your contact information will be um, good to give <clears throat> because there's other mothers um, yeah. that deal with the justice system in so many different ways. Um, <laughs> and parents that need that support um, that you have and uh, what you were shown how to come out of this um, the way that you have inspirational. Yeah. So I am going to 
open up. You guys can unmute and ask questions if you like. Um, I think you did very well. It's not a presentation, it's your heart. You gave us your heart. Hey, I this is Lee, how are you? I'm doing good, Lee, how about you? Doing well, doing well. So, you know, when you talk about the struggle it took for you and transitioning from the grief to open up your nonprofit, obviously you have a strength to keep going, right? So even though you would say midnight was your, you know, cut off, just give it to the next day at midnight, uh, I just wanted to say, you know, as a person who's been to combat, seeing some of the things I got and uh, knowing the effects of how some people still can't get by it, I just want to say I appreciate you, um, you know, having your daughter to stand there with you and continue to move forward. So uh, just kudos. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. I didn't have a question, but I just wanted to thank you for sharing because that was a beautiful, that was beautiful how you you took something that I could honestly say I don't know I would be able to get through and and created something that's an avenue that I think isn't explored enough. And like you said, in children and in women, like it's not something that people think about like, oh, you know, let's turn to being creative. Most of the time people think, you know, you just got to go through it. You got to talk about it. You got to learn to do like to do without. And like, like, like you birthed something so phenomenal. So just thank you for sharing. And, and that's beautiful. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. I thank you as well. And, um, a few people on the line know um, the story um, or my husband's background. My husband's brother was murdered 30 years ago. And um, we just recently, a few weeks ago, we just went on a spiritual journey where he was finally able to, or he was finally ready to forgive. And so um, we're in Texas right now, but we went all the way back up to New York. Um, you know, to retrace some steps and, you know, visit that spot where his brother was murdered, you know, same amount of um, time shot on the street, you know, and, you know, my mother-in-law um, told me about having to take water jugs, you know, a few days later and go wash his blood, you know, off of the sidewalk. And the amount of grief, um, you know, that they both walk with, you know, as mother and um, brother is unimaginable. And um, what you what you built from that grief is is amazing, and it's very, very much needed. It's yes. very much needed. I wish my husband had that kind of an outlet. I wish my mother in law had something like that to turn to, yes. you know, when they were going through this. Yeah. And um, so what you've managed to do is amazing. And thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's very important. Um, I, I think a lot of people turn to talk therapy and I'm, I don't bash it, um, but I know for myself to be able to create and get this pain outside of my body has been number one. Um, I don't think I could have lived if, if, if I kept it inside not, and I, I, and Kim can let, she can tell you because she's seen my art go from this point to this point. Um, I will let you guys know just a, a little bit to let you know, two weeks before my son was murdered. Um, I never really painted. I always sketched. I've been sketching since I was a kid. So two weeks before he was murdered, we were at a garage sale and there were four quarts of paint. And I was looking at it. He said, Ma, go ahead and get that. Let me get that for you. I said, boy, I'm, I'll never use that paint. I'm not, I don't need it. He said, Ma, go ahead and get it. So I got it. The so the four quarts of paint, I never painted before. But after he was murdered, I did my first mural on a wall in a yoga studio. And I used that paint. And that was the most freeing. That was the start of my healing. Hmm. Um, just And it, it was just the start of my healing. 
Mm -hmm. um, and that was, I think that was about 14 by 14 feet. And I just, I just went at it and um, it was amazing. Bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, where, where, do you have a picture of it? I do. Um, I would love, I will, um, I will share my information with you guys um, before we get off here. Um, if you go to ISKL Designs on uh, Facebook or just pull up I, Google ISKL Designs, uh, my business information will come up. And um, also, and I'm just going to throw it out there, if there's anyone who needs to speak to me, any, uh, anyone who has suffered a loss, um, my telephone number is 928-529-8854. And you can get a hold of me at any time. I'm available. Hello. Uh, can I, am I being heard? Yes. Yes. I, how you doing? Listen, I applaud you. Uh, in 2018, my wife, uh, her, her son, uh, dropped dead from a massive heart attack while he was at work. And that ripped her heart out. And, uh, and, and, and I, you know, working with her through her struggle to make sense of things and, and for you to uh, intuit intuitively realize that in order to work through the pain, you have to fully embrace it in order to get through it. That is such an important part of grief. You, you're not trying to stuff the feelings away, but embracing them, fully experiencing them will help you get through them. And, and you're blessed to be able to a lot of people do reach the point. Thank you so much. They don't experience the feeling. And, and, and so, you know, I applaud you. You know, uh, there's nothing but greater things ahead of you because, you know, the greater the pain, the greater the reward. And, yeah. and there, there's, you found your niche and, and, and I think you'll do wonderful things with it. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say your your strength is beautiful and continue to share your, your story. It was very touching. Um, I'm really um, I, I have, I'm really passionate about uh, crimes and murders, and you know it, it really does have a, play, a touch of place that really aggravates me. So to see you turn that into some your pain into something beautiful really is a, a wonderful thing. So thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your story. You're amazing. Um, not a lot of people realize how much things like that happen. I remember um, when I was younger, I think I was like seven or eight, um, and my dad was driving through McDonald's and we, we met a cousin, he was like 17. And then like a week later, we found out that he was murdered over a bike. Yeah. So it happens a lot. and. Thank you for being an advocate. I just thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Um, it does. It happens more so more often than not. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of people want to understand every detail of this. We're not going to understand it in this world. It's, it's not for us to understand in this world. It, it just isn't. And once we realize that, then I think that we can move forward. Um, to me, that's that I don't have all the answers for everyone else, but I do have the answers for myself. So I think that was a turning point for me. Okay, anyone else before we get ready to close up? Um, so go ahead. I thought I heard a voice. No. All right, Ida, can you give your information one more time so Ashley can put put it in the um chat? 
Yes, I can. Um, you can reach me at isperlin11 at gmail.com. You can also reach me at 928-529-8854. Um, either two of those, or you can reach me online at ISKL Designs or IEB. I see you, Stephen Art Foundation .org. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, Nyla Oni, are you able to speak briefly? Yes. Okay. Naya is going to be on next week um, speaking. And so I just wanted you guys to know if you want to be a part of that, just send the link. The people that are part of the membership will uh, have that um, link sent to them. We're going to do some open um, professional and business uh, webinars where you guys can explain yourselves um, into uh, next month. We have a young lady coming on that organized cash kids for uh, young people funding, kids funding, teaching them how to fund in Jacksonville, Florida. Nye is gonna be on next week. Uh, let's see, Karen is a gong master um, and intuitive. She will be coming on and also um, our acupuncturist. So we have some good things coming up until um, maybe around the middle of November. All right, any questions, anything you wanna add? Thank you, Kim. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, now you wanna add uh, your topic or do you wanna just say, hey? <laughs> hey everybody, I don't know what my topic is yet. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. That's oh, all right. All right. So look out for her um, advertisement. Share. Um, we're going to share everyone. Everyone is taking um, higher levels in their professionalism, even our um, leaders in our leadership program. And so we want to get that look for you guys, too. So I'll be coming around to get another date for you all. How about that? So thank you for coming on, Ida. I will talk to you soon. And um, also um, be looking forward to my painting. Uh, I have to say that I ordered yes. <laughs> yes. So you guys have a wonderful day. Be safe and do not worry about the climate of our situations in the world. All right. Be blessed. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.